Hello friends, in this video we're going to be showing you how to install your receiver and do the final hookup and adjustments for your FT Tutor. Now for this I'm going to be using a simple 4 channel receiver, my transmitter, I'm going to have my power pot available and also the wing and the fuselage here. And now in this video also I'm going to show you a unique mix that we can do that makes this plane even easier to fly and more of a pleasure in the air. Now keep in mind if you're doing the 3 channel version of this you're not going to be needing to follow the instructions on hooking up the ailerons. Make sure you plug your rudder into your aileron port because that's going to be what turns you. Now let's go ahead and get started here. If you haven't already bound your receiver, go ahead and do so. Now this is a brand new receiver, so I'm going to go ahead and go through the binding process with you here. Whenever we plug this in, the throttle on a Spectrum port is going to be port number one. Do not plug it in the battery. And also, if you're using our FTESCs and you notice this little tiny red connection right here, this is not meant to go into your receiver. This is accessory power for either FPV gear, LED lights, things like that. Just keep in mind that this little port here gives you full battery voltage. So don't plug in anything that can't take the voltage of the battery you supply. So, we have our little tiny ESC wire plugged in right here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my 1300 milliamp TAP2 battery. With one hand, I'm going to press down on the button. And with the other hand, I'm going to plug this in. And if I did this right, you're going to see a flashing orange light just like that. My next step is with a new model programmed here, I'm going to hold down on my bind button. I'm going to make sure I'm at least three or four feet away. There we are, we're now bound. We're gonna listen for the ESC to beat. And now when we give it control, we can see the motor moves. We've already made sure that the motor spins counterclockwise. If it doesn't spin counterclockwise for you, reverse two of the three connections on your ESC. All right, our next step now is we're gonna unplug this and we're gonna install this in the FT Tutor. Now when placing this in, don't just shove it as hard as you can into the back of the fuselage. Go ahead and slide it in, and we're going to use our front hatch kind of as a little bit of a gauge to help us. So I'm just going to simply slide this in nice and gently, all the way back. And we're going to see that there's a little stop at the very back here. I'm going to press that down into place. And now also, I'm going to follow up with my, my hatch here, and make sure that the hatch sits fully in. If it's too tight here, just go ahead and pull this out just a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch. We want this to sit nice and flat. There we go. And if I look back, that is perfect. Next, let's go ahead and take our barbecue skewer, and we're gonna pass it through the front first. We're gonna go right through the front. If we lined everything up right, you'll notice that it'll pop right through those holes or really close to it on the firewall. There's one. We'll go to the back side. And then we'll pass it all the way through. And we don't need to put any rubber bands on this, so I'm going to get this nice and close here, just about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to cut this side. Make sure that your power pot is fully seated against the bottom of the doublers here, so you don't have too much down thrust. Again, right through the one side, and through the other. Pass it on through, and just about an eighth of an inch, right up against it. Now that we have our power pot in, we're gonna go and put our attention back towards the hatch because the hatch is actually gonna key into the front of the firewall. And then we're gonna come back with a little bit of hot glue reinforcement on the very back to finish off our hatch. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna install our hatch now. It should slide right down in. You're gonna notice that there's a little like 45 degree bevel here that's gonna capture this back end. Take the pointy end of your barbecue skewer included with your kit, poke one side, then go right in the center of the other hole then poke the other side. Now we can lift this up and we're going to cut two three quarter inch pieces here. We're only going to leave about maybe a quarter of an inch sticking out the very front. So there's one and there's two. A little drop of glue in each hole is all you need. A little there, a little there, and with the twisting motion we're going to press this down into place. See most of the glue actually came out the back. That's no problem at all. There's two. And while we're at it, I'm going to put a nice healthy bead of hot glue right on the back. And I'm just going to let this carry right on the edge. I'm not going to crush it down in. This is going to give us a little raised lip here. So whenever you pop this in now, there we 
we go, just a nice raised edge. You're gonna get a really satisfying little pop and then it's gonna hold in for you. This is also to make sure that your hatch lasts a very long time. Let's let this dry for about two minutes and then we'll go back and do an install. Now, as I mentioned in the opening of the video, if you're building a trainer version of this and you don't want ailerons on your wings, that's absolutely fine. The rudder is gonna plug into our aileron port and that is the next port, port number two on a receiver. If you're gonna be doing the elevator, that's gonna be port number three. Now, because I'm gonna be doing a four channel here, I'm gonna go ahead and plug my ailerons into port two, which means rudder will be into port number four. So let's go ahead and look down inside of our fuselage here. back here I'm pulling this one that is to my rudder which means this is my elevator right here you don't have to worry if you ever get them backwards you can always easily go back and swap them later so here's my elevator that's going to go into port number three and then here's my rudder and that's going to go into port number four that's always really important anytime you're plugging these in make sure your signal wires on the proper side for this specific receiver the signal wire is going to be on the very top so if you see yellow or white and then you see brown next to it, you have your ground and your signal reverse. You simply need to unplug it and plug it in the right way. Now this is polarity protected and the hot is in the middle. So even if you plug them in backwards, you're not gonna hurt anything, but the servo is not gonna work and you may think that you have a problem. Our next step is to bring our wing in and plug that into servo port number two. Now for this, we're gonna be using the Y harness that's included in our power pack C. The Y harness is simply gonna plug into servo port number two and you can leave that plugged into your receiver and just simply use these two guys right here to plug into your wing. It doesn't matter whether you plug your left or your right wing in. Again, we're gonna match up our signal wires with signal wires, and I'm not gonna tape these in because I wanna be able to remove them. Included in our hardware pack, we have this Velcro that you see right here. Let's take our knife and we're gonna cut about a one inch section and we'll put that in the back of the receiver and then we'll Velcro the receiver into our power pot. And next, I'm gonna take my rubber bands. I'm gonna give a little bit of a pre-stretch. These premium power packs have some really, really strong rubber bands. I'm just gonna put two on for right now. Next, I'm gonna take the remaining Velcro that we have. I got fuzzy on my battery, so I'm gonna go prickly on the airplane. Now, for the longest time, I used to say fuzzy fuselage, and it's a lot of fun, but a lot of community members reminded me, whenever you have prickly on your battery, and you put that in your pocket, you just cleaned out your pocket from all the lint. So I've been slowly going back to prickly plain fuzzy on the battery. So thank you guys for your feedback. Next I'm gonna install a nice long piece of Velcro right on the bottom of my power pod. And this is gonna give me the ability to shift the battery forward or backward to get the perfect center of gravity. With my prop still off, my transmitter on, I'm gonna plug in the battery and just temporarily set it down on the power pod. There we go. At this point now, I can move all of my controls. I should have throttle, elevator, aileron, and rudder. Now, you don't wanna go out and fly yet. You wanna make sure that your controls are going the proper direction. So for this next step, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the plane towards the perspective that I want you to see it as. So in other words, I want the tail to be as close as possible to you. First, let's go ahead and check our elevator. For our elevator, we're gonna pull back on the stick. And what we wanna see is we wanna see the elevator move up. In this case, my elevator moves down. So we know that we need to reverse my elevator. The next thing I'm gonna check is gonna be my ailerons. When I move my aileron to the right, I wanna see the right aileron go up, and that also goes down. So I now know both my elevator and ailerons need to be reversed. The final thing I wanna look at is my rudder. When I move my rudder stick to the right, I should see the rudder go right, and it does. So my rudder's okay, but my elevator and ailerons need to be reversed. To do that specifically on the Spectrum, all I simply need to do is press the rolly ball once, scroll to servo setup, Scroll over to travel, click on it, two clicks, takes you to reverse. I can now highlight aileron and elevator and reverse both of those. Now when I pull back on the stick, the elevator goes up. When I push right on the aileron, the right aileron goes up. And when I push right on the rudder, that still moves to the right. All of my controls are now moving in the proper direction. This would also be a really good point to look at all of your control surfaces and if they're not perfectly level, in other words, if you can't put a straight edge on your rudder or your elevator, and if the elevator's kicked up and down, go ahead and go to your sub trim on this and adjust that until it's all evened out. Now, if you follow along with the videos and you use the holes that I said, your control throws should be very, very close. 
there's gonna be two last things I'm gonna show you, especially if you're a beginner that I strongly encourage you to do. Number one is to go into your dual rates and expos and soften the center of your stick. Softening your expo is gonna make it so your plane's gonna fly a little bit smoother and the center point of your stick is gonna be a little bit softer. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and press back. I'm gonna roll down to where it says dual rate and expo. And for aileron, I'm gonna give it 30%. Now, if you're using a non-computerized radio or a radio like a DXE or a Spectrum DXS, your high rates and low rates will automatically have a little bit of expo dialed in and you don't have to worry about this step. Also, if you're using a radio that has no programming, the throws that we dialed in when we're setting up our servos and our push rods should be enough to give you a really good experience. This is all in the name of trying to give you the best experience possible and making sure the plane is as dialed in as possible for you. All right, let's go ahead and back out one, two clicks from here back to the main screen. Now, with trainers, oftentimes, especially high wings, you have a phenomenon called adverse yaw. Adverse yaw is where the dropping aileron will create more drag, and even though you're banking to the right, you're gonna notice that the nose will wanna carry to the left. This requires you to do something called coordinated flight. That's where you mix your aileron and your rudder in together. We're gonna make this a little bit easier, especially if you have a computerized radio, because there's a mix you can do very easily that's gonna make this plane fly nice and coordinated for you. Again, we designed this airplane so it can be flown off the most basic radio. It'll still fly great if you don't do this step. We just want you to have a really great experience and also learn a little bit too. So for this, I'm gonna press the rolling ball once, and I'm gonna scroll all the way down until I get to mixing. Now you're gonna notice there's a mix that says aileron to rudder. We're gonna go ahead and select this. And for this, we're gonna highlight both left and right. You can see you can go one or the other, but as long as you don't have any uh, pressure on your stick, it's gonna highlight both. And we're gonna take this to about 20%. We're gonna dial this into about 20% to start with. Our next step here is it's still on inhibit. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it to on. You can assign this to a switch if you want, but for this sake, we're just gonna leave it on all the time. Now, if I move my aileron to the right, watch the rudder. You're gonna see just a very little bit amount of rudder feeds into that, helping you coordinate your turns. You can dial this up or down based on your preference, but this is a good start. At this point, the FT Tutor is now done. Our last step here before taking out and flying and putting on the props is to check our center of gravity. On the bottom surface of the wing, you're gonna notice two holes. Those are gonna be holes where you're gonna place your fingers and check your center of gravity. Now you can adjust the center of gravity both forward and aft, but this is a really good starting point to give you a good experience. Simply put your fingers where both holes are gonna be. And what you wanna see is the airplane pretty much level or just a touch nose down. I always encourage people to fly just a touch nose heavy for their first flight, because that's gonna give them the safest experience. It's always easy to adjust backwards, but if you have a tail heavy airplane to begin with, the plane's just gonna be too uncontrollable to have a good experience with. So in this case, my 1300 tattoo battery is split right in the middle, right over the seam of the windshield. You can move that forward or backward based on your preference, but this is perfect the way it is. I'm just gonna plug in my battery real quick here. Once you've found where your favorite center of gravity is, take a magic marker and mark where your battery leading edge is gonna be, and also write down the size of your battery. You can fly anywhere from a 1300 all the way up to a 2200 million in this specific airplane. So as you change your batteries, you're gonna to wanna to change your position where you mount them to keep your center of gravity accurate. You can simply write a note right on the side of your power pod, marking where the battery placement is. So when, say maybe you go from a three cell to a four cell or a small to a big battery, you know exactly where to place it. Let's go ahead and put our hatch on, check our fit, and at this point, we can go ahead and take this airplane into paint, we can put our decals on, we can put our windshield on, it's ready to fly.